All right, guys, we're going to look at the Blancpain Bath Escape 50 Fathoms. So big thanks to Nick and the crew at Exquisite Timepieces for sending this over. They sent over a heck of a batch of watches, and this is one of them for sure. Here's the part number. It is the 5000 Series 1110-71S, and this is number 13769. Uh, price point on this. It's up there, but still doable for a luxury diver, $13,100. Something that uh, gives you potential, you know, option in that segment of all those luxury divers. Maybe you look at the Blanc Palm, whether it's, they have, I'd never really looked at the full lineup from the brand, to be honest with you guys. They have a dizzying amount of different options uh, in a couple of different categories and this one, you know, there's even a titanium version of this watch That has a crazy titanium grade uh, That they used for the manufacturing uh, This one has this incredibly well done bracelet that is almost mesmerizing I'm a bracelet guy even though I have been wearing most of my watches with uh, aftermarket strap uh, recently, but traditionally I'm a bracelet guy and this bracelet is something special for sure. We'll do a close-up of that. Before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about the case size. I measure the case at 42. I hear a lot of people say it's 43. It's 43 at the bezel. The case is 42, guys. I'm um, sure the bezel overhangs a little bit, but that's pretty common for a dive watch, right? Still, the case is 42. The lug-to-lug, -lug, 49.7. Everything's fully brushed on this, and it's a nice deep brushing. Wait till you see the close-up on it. 13.5 millimeter thick, double dome sapphire crystal up top. 13.5 is not too thick. That's an appropriate thickness for a watch that has 300 meter water resist. A lot of watches, even with the 200 meter water resist, are also 13.5. I see that over and over, and it's a common spec on a lot of these watches. Is about 13 and a half millimeter thick. is pretty common for a diver. I measure the lug width here. I think I grabbed it right at 23 millimeter. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it looks like it's 22, but when I measured it. it Kind of specked out at 23. It does taper down to 20. You can see the bracelet has like kind of like venting built into it. It is a butterfly clasp. Eh, I could I could have done without that. I could have done without the butterfly clasp. But it works. It works nice. It's clean. Gives it a nice clean profile. You do have a display case back. Now is the time to zoom in. Let's zoom in and check this stuff out. So the movement inside is called the Caliber 1315. There's a bunch of small writing on the base plates in there. You can even see up top there, if, if you can read that, it actually says um, 35 joules. It's regulated six positions. This movement is anti-magnetic as well. It's, a, it's kind of written on the uh, case back there, actually. The rotor, if you look at the bottom right side of the rotor, it says gold, 18 karat. So I'm thinking that the rotor is actually 18 karat gold. Pretty dang cool. Like to see a little bit of gold in a watch. Why not? I think it would have been cool as much as it matches. It would have been cool if it would have been like yellow gold or something. That would have been pretty fun. I think, if I'm not mistaken, some of the, yeah, the adjustment screws on the balance are actually gold. Like I said, you have a ton of rotors. There's three barrels in this movement. Three barrels. I think that's actually written somewhere on the, one of the plates. Um, because it has 120 hour power reserve. I want to show the back side of this bracelet too. I'm assuming those screws, which are positioned in line like that, I'm too afraid to mess with them. This is a brand new watch. It's not my watch. It's, a, it's you know, it belongs to exquisite timepieces. So... Um, I'm thinking you like probably quarter turn those or something and it releases those. I'm guessing. This is one of those things that like curios curiosity almost got me. I almost got a screwdriver out to play with that, but I'm not about to do that. But check out the way the bracelet operates, the way they engineered these links. It is so cool. It's like some sort of tank track or something. It's like very much connected to one another, but then they're also tapered and gapped so they will breathe on wrist. So that is really cool. Here's a look at the beautiful anthracite dial, full polished handset, kind of like a full rectangle hour and minute hand with a syringe tip sort of design. 
And then you have those beautiful applied indices that are chamfered and high polished. They really catch the light date kind of stuck in between the four and five o'clock position. Very legible. You have a beautiful ceramic bezel insert. 120 click bezel. You can see a clean sweeping movement there. Look how good that dial is. You can actually see the reflection of the seconds hand underneath it, even though it is not like a full gloss dial. I guess maybe it is gloss, but they glossed over the anthracite. It's, it's, it's a beautiful dial. An eight millimeter screw down crown. Look at that finishing on this case. Nice deep brushing on there. It's gonna hold up really well. Okay, bezel action. Very clean and smooth. A little, I don't wanna say play, cause there's not really play in it, but you have to like drag it back to lock into position, if that makes sense. Just, it's not really play, cause it doesn't like move around on you. It's just, you have to settle it into position. Let's pop this on my wrist, seven and a quarter inch wrist. So, so you have a, a size reference, what this might look like on your wrist. I didn't weigh it, um, but it has a nice heft to it. I almost don't even need to size it. I would probably have to take one link out. And if you do have to take a link out of one of these, Hopefully you're buying these at exquisite timepieces and they're just going to size it for you. But if you do pull a link out of one of these watches and you only have to pull one, pull it off the 6 o'clock side. Otherwise the watch is constantly going to be trying to do that to you. If you pull it off the 6 o'clock side, your natural movement wants to throw the watch off balance that way. So if you shorten this side, it'll actually balance it out and it'll stay positioned on your wrist correctly. Just a little tip in case you didn't already figure that out. Beautiful watch. Let's give it a little blast with the UV light so we can get the full effect in the dark. That's some legit good loom. For how small a real estate you have on those indices, that is a heavy punch of loom. I'm not even sure how they did that. That is uh, solid. Well done. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.